Go to Max. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back. Season 3, Episode 17 of Hit the Books podcast here. All about sports betting, the best bets you should be taking, and everything surrounding sports. We're here, Week 16 of the NFL season, coming to you a day early this week again. Um, this week here in Week 16, one Thursday night football game, two on Saturday, handful and a half on Sunday, and three games on Monday. Also, we make sure to touch in on our other leagues. Bowl season is upon us, and the NHL is moving. But that's all I got here so far. Let's jump into this week's episode and introduce my co-hosts, Huff and Mackie, here with me this week. Mackie, let's start off with you. What do you got for us, buddy? Another week here, Week 16. We're moving. Yeah, good week of football. I, was, I had the uh, pleasure to be in Buffalo for that Bills Cowboys game. Not the, not the outcome I wanted, but you know I, that that place was uh, definitely an experience. Great time there. Um, great crowd. Great experience overall. But um, yeah, last last Sunday or Monday, I forget when that Cowboys game was. I won nine and a half units, and then I think I lost it all this this week. So you know, just kind of just keeping up where I left off on this season. Not one to remember, but you know, a few weeks left. See if we can bounce back here. Other than that. Me and Huff are not friends this week. Fantasy football playoffs and my finals. <laughs> um, so I'll be talking to him next week. But uh, other than that, not much going on. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting show here with them not talking. But we will get to that <laughs> here later on. <laughs> Huff, what do you got for us, buddy, here? Another week, like I keep saying, week 16. This season's moving fast. Mackie said it, says it every week. What do you got? Yeah, I, I myself have also been having a, a skid the past couple of weeks. Haven't been doing too good on the card. Can't get some of these spreads and touchdowns. Uh, to go through for me, but uh, obviously my record doesn't look the same thanks to a couple first touchdowns. I'm still floating above water there, but uh, need to need to be better there, absolutely. But uh, obviously, like you said, week 16, seasons flying by, uh, lots of stuff other or lots of other stuff going on in the other sports world. Not much uh, going on with me. Pretty boring weekend this past weekend. Just kind of sat back and watched some football. But um, other than that, not much else coming for me. Ready to get into this slate this week. Yeah, definitely got a shout out Ace for kind of carrying our NFL card this year. Last year, you know, last year was kind of the opposite, but he's doing pretty good this year. That yeah, yeah. Dude, he's, like, he's right over 20 or right under 20. That's fucking insane. He's killing it this year. Good for him. But uh, you, your, your touchdown scores and his just bets overall. So um, big, doing big work this year so far. It honestly blows my mind because, like, I am not the type of person to do, like, a three-prop Monday Night Football like he always does. And he'll hit two of those props like almost every time. It he's, blows. I think he just did it last night. He's been slamming him, dude. He's been hitting him really hard. And got got her over four and a half was a loss last night, but it was a pretty bad beat. He had four like pretty early. The one that and he the he'll hit ones that are like plus one thirty, plus one twenty five. Like I'm like, damn. Like I don't even think to like. I was right after likely bet scored that first touchdown. I was like, that is so me to take him first touchdown. Why did I not do that? I was so mad at myself. I'm like. I should have just done the catches with Ace. Like three and a half was plus one twenty five, but yeah, get good odds on it too. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not the biggest prop guy. I either just take the touchdown, the first touchdown, or just like take a spread. I don't know. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm just stick stick to the bread and I butter. Get so keep it simple. I get so frustrated when like I take a receiver over three and a half pro or over three and a half catches, and like the quarterback just doesn't even look at them, but they drop one early, and you know they're not going to them like for another couple of drives or later I've, that drive. I've I had too many. I've had too many scenarios where I'll bet a player prop and he gets injured, like or he misses like half the game and he comes back and it's too late I'm for him to hit a prop or something. And I'm like, this is just like I, I can't bank on this one player having a good game, you know? Yeah, and I, I will I'll never forget this. One of my like whenever I first started betting, one of my first like four or five leg parlays I ever hit was the last leg came down to Derek Carr, like under one eighty five passing yards or one whatever, two some passing yards, whatever his passing yards were at. And it was like Aaron Rodgers on Monday Night Football this year. He got hurt on the first play, but he threw one pass. So he ended the game with like three yards. Bang, I cashed the ticket. That was the easiest last leg of a parlay I'll ever have in my insane. life. That's insane. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. That'll get you hooked right there. <laughs> yeah. I, from there, that that was my moment on where I'm like, I guess I'm just an unders this guy now. is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah, that's not cool, much though. else. Yeah, well, let's get into the, to the, what do we got? Power rankings to start for the NFL? Yeah, we got a whole bunch of stuff here ahead to get into this week here, starting off here with our power rankings in the NFL. Starting off with our power rankings here in the NFL, coming in at number five, we have Mackey's Dallas Cowboys, number four, the Buffalo Bills, number three, the Miami Dolphins, two, the Baltimore Ravens, and number one, the San Francisco 49ers holding that top spot. What are we thinking here, boys? Week 16. This is our power rankings. Cowboys, Bills, Dolphins, Ravens, 49ers. Huff, what are you thinking? 
Yeah, obviously, and the the best part is we get to see two of these teams go head to head this weekend down in Miami. Uh, we get the Cowboys visiting the Dolphins, two teams that a lot of people have called. What'd you say? We get the Niners and Ravens too. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's Monday Night Football, so we get we two get matchups out of our top five. Two uh, awesome Bills escaped this one this week with a visit out to SoFi Stadium to take on the lowly Chargers. But yeah, uh, you could see definitely a fully different list next week, depending on how these games go. A lot of people have been calling the Dolphins and the Cowboys both fraudulent, have been able to beat a good team. Obviously, both of these teams have pretty good records going head to head. You got to think the loser of this game is going to get that f- true fraudulent stamp from most of the people out there. Um, but obviously, then, like you said, Monday Night Football, we get Ravens at Niners. I already saw that one. Ravens are a pretty big underdog in that matchup, and all they do is keep on winning. But these 49ers are very legit in that, uh, for sure, that number one team in the NFL. But yeah, definitely going to have a good week this week. I didn't notice the the second matchup. I'd more had my eyes on that Dolphins Cowboys game. Yeah, we got a few good matchups this week. Cowboys going into Miami. We know my, we know the Cowboys are a different team on the road. Um, if you got if you didn't believe it before, you definitely believe it after Sunday. But um, going to be a hard test for them. I definitely um. The two teams that can't beat the good teams, you know. Um, so it's going to be a good one. We'll see if we get any points because none of these both these teams like to underperform. But um, that Niners Ravens game, those two definitely the two most legit teams in the league this year, most consistent teams in the league this year. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a good game. Definitely going to be tough for the Ravens to go over in San Francisco. But um, both those teams are legit, and they'll, they'll definitely both. Be I up do. There. I do think as far as the as far as the Dolphins go, I do think I know they played the Jets, and the Jets offense hasn't been really anything all season, but. A 30 to nothing win. I mean, it's hard to truly put up the donut in the NFL. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of the Jets have played a lot of games. I think they've at least put points up in most of them. Um, more than uh, 30 to nothing. They did it without Tyree Kill. I thought that that's for me why the Dolphins made that jump back up into there above the Bills. I know the Bills have the, the spot on them head to head, but the Dolphins still lead that division, still in play for that one seed if they can win this game this week. Um, I, I think Miami's a pretty dangerous team, and I, I liked, I actually do like that Tyreek sat out of that game, not only for my fantasy sake where he's going to put up two tuds on your head this week with 140 yards, let's, but also... Let's, just, let's remind everyone that 60% of Huff's fantasy team is, is a Miami <laughs> Dolphins, so everything he is saying right now, go, just take it with a grain of salt because he's <laughs> heavy bias on the Miami Dolphins right now. No, I truly I truly do think it is better for that team, for their long hopes. So like they, I mean, they were looking to win that game kind of like an eke one out if they needed to. Tyreek, they said, was ready to go. He was running routes in pregame. They think he could have played in that game. Would he have been a, himself? Would he have been more of a decoy? That's a whole different story, but... This is a huge game for this week for both of these teams. And uh, I, I don't know. I'm big on these Dolphins. I also think the Cowboys have a really good team. That's why I'm most excited for that game this week for sure. Yeah, um, I don't want to I'm definitely going to sign a little bias here, but I I wouldn't I would just kind of overlook that game. I, OK, I wouldn't say overlook it completely, but there was a lot of different conditions that went into that Cowboys game in Buffalo where. It, I mean, it just didn't go their way. I mean, they they had three opening drive. The first three drives to score touchdowns. One of them was a third and four roughing the passer, ended up going down, scoring a touchdown. Another one was a blocked punt that I thought he got a piece of, but I guess he didn't. Went down, scored a touchdown because it was a first down. And the other one was a, a, a illegal hit, I think. It was a third and 19 illegal yeah, hit. Some weird fl- yeah, I know what you're talking it's about. It's 21 to three right there. The game's basically over. It's pouring rain. James Cook puts up 185 yards in the ground. I mean, it's just, it, it's a, it was a very shitty situation. I'm not really making excuses because Dak did absolutely nothing, but. I mean, Josh Allen completed the ball seven times. He threw seven for 13. So uh, it is I think crazy. I would say if we did play them again, I think it would be a completely different game. I wouldn't, I'm not going to say that we would definitely beat them because the Bills are still very good. But I, I wouldn't, I, I think that everyone's getting a little, or exaggerating a little going into Miami. Like, like the Cowboys just, just put an egg in like a perfect game or like in a perfect scenario game. I think Dak's going to go into Miami in a, in a, in a dome there against a defense is kind of underperformed. Not last week playing against the Jets, it's the Jets, but the defense is kind of underperformed, and I think he's really going to light it up. I think the Dolphins will get points as well too, but I'm not going to. I'm not looking. I don't think we're going to see a a low scoring game in in the Hard Rock uh, next Sunday. Yeah, no, I think this is the this is the game of the week where I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to bet the over in that one. For you sure. like Miami, you like Miami though? Do you I actually do. like Miami, or do you just like them because you need them to do good? No, 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 no. I like true like bias aside. I actually think that they just can defend home field, but it kills me that. I mean, I said the Bills were going to win that game. I didn't think it was going to be that commanding, and it kills me to think the Cowboys are just going to go and lose two on the road. But like, 
Now you're seeing the Niners did the three game losing streak. The Eagles did the three game losing streak the first week. The Eagles aren't on our top five. So like, I don't know. Could the Cowboys slip one up here? Eagles, who do they get next week? Because that was crazy. Ryan. They just lost to Seattle. Like they're still in. I don't think that was that crazy to be honest. But I, I mean, three in a row is. I'm crazy. saying for your guys' sake, you get your ass kicked in Buffalo, and then just bang Monday Night Football. They lose. You guys are still first place in the division. Like we had to hear so much from them too, and then they now we control our own destiny too. The, the Cowboys can win the can uh, win out and win the division, and it yeah. wasn't the case before because we had an extra conference loss. Does now it hurt you that battle. much if you who's the Eagles get this week? Giants, and then they have. I don't know who in between, but then they have the Giants again, week 18. They play the Giants twice to end the season? Yeah. Damn, that's fucked for you guys, kind of. They, I mean, they, I already know, played all, can... they already played all their hard games. They beat the Chiefs. They beat the Bills. Dude, that's a Monday night game on Christmas. You could think the, the Giants could keep that a little close. Cowboys win this week. Game. The Cowboys win this week. They're winning the division. I'm, oh, you can lock that in. If the Cowboys win this week, you think they win the division for sure? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see that. Because the Dolphins, the thing that scares me is the Dolphins need this game just as bad because they know the Bills are on their ass. They The only thing the Dolphins need to do is beat the Bills week 18. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, you're right. That's all, all they really need to do. Because I heard if, they, if the Dolphins lose one game in the next two weeks and the Bills win the next two, week 18 is for the division. Yeah. But week 18, they can lose. If, if the. Dolphins lose the next two. They have the same record playing week 18, unless Bills have the tiebreaker there. True, because the Bills already are up. Bills already won the game in Buffalo week seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know how I don't know who has that tiebreaker, but I'm like they... rooting so hard that the that game's for the division just because I'll be there. That'll be sick, man. Yeah. That'll be awesome. That's gonna be a fucking sick game. I hope that's just like a 31-27 final score. Tyreek goes for like 500 yards, and you can't even say that's because it's biased because that's week 18. We don't even play then. Yeah, week 18 is not even fantasy anymore. <laughs> yeah. I did that for a reason. I Because all the fucking teams that just like bench their players or don't really try that much. Yeah, but you got to be. Um, I mean, that's not, that's not the easiest defense to go against in the playoffs. What? Like, you have to go against. Like, if the Dolphins are playing like. I don't know the Cardinals. You'd be a lot more happy than them. Oh yeah, dude. I believe me. I was looking at it. I'm like, all right. Say I do get out of this matchup with like a lot of fantasy points from Tyree Kill and like all my Dolphins players against the Cowboys (laughs) next week. They get fucking in Baltimore. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Can we get some like cupcake games to end the season? Like that is really tough. But I have Christian. Oh no, that's not even in that league. Shit. I wish they could just play the Jets the rest of the year. Which the Jets have a good defense too, but they just lit them up. So that they do just they, it's it's kind of like the, that divisional team that just has your number. Like yeah, yeah, they're a good defense, but the Dolphins just run it up on the Jets. They always yeah. do. The mm-hmm. Past couple years they have. Yeah, definitely. Alrighty, yeah. boys, let's get into this week's set of games here. The week sixteen slate, sixteen games this week. No teams on the bye. Let's start it off here with our. One and only Thursday night football game, the New Orleans Saints at the Los Angeles Rams. Rams, the favorite here, four and a half points for them, minus 210 on the money line, plus 176 for the Saints, total at 46 and a half. Trends I got here, Rams are 17, four and one against the spread in their last 22 games played in December. The under is 12 and two in the New Orleans last 14 conference games. Under is 19 and five in New Orleans last 24 games. And the Rams, seven, three against the spread in their last 10 games at home. Trends there pointing towards the Rams and the under. But we're curious to hear what you guys think here coming into week 16. What do we got here? Mac, you start. I'm looking at the standings real quick. Yeah, I do like the Rams here. I think the Rams are playing good football, especially at home. They've won three straight at home. Um, Saints, I mean, Derek Carr, pretty good game last week. Not going to get into that just yet. You'll hear me about <laughs> it. But, um, Derek no, he Carr, did. Pretty- I, he, I bet on the Saints. I thought he had a good game too. Pretty good game last week. I don't think this is going to be a test for him, but I just don't think the Saints team is going to be able to keep up. This Rams team's been playing pretty good football. Matthew Stafford, not many quarterbacks are playing better football than Matthew Stafford right now. Very low key. Um, he's getting the job done. He's not turning the ball over a lot. He's got the receivers to do it. He's got the weapons. Kyron Williams in the backfield playing cr- incredible football as well. Um, I, I just think that offense is going to be a little too much, and that Saints offense just doesn't move enough. Um, I don't know. Probably maybe more of a low-scoring game, but I think the Rams definitely get out, get out of this one with a win. 
Yeah, kind of scares me four and a half. I, I just think the Sa- the Rams are able to score too many points for the Saints. And what the Saints were able to put up points last week. Um, I, they, they definitely look good in that matchup against the Giants. Giants defense isn't really known to be world beaters. Uh, obviously, the Giants love to play good in the prime time. We saw them take down the Packers now two weeks ago. But um, I, I like the Rams here. I don't know if I love the number. I might put that in a teaser and try to carry that over into the weekend. and. Uh, see what I can do with it and get the Rams maybe plus three because uh, this is a scary game. Both teams are, what, seven and seven. Right? Saints now have a chance to maybe sneak in the playoffs if they don't win the division as a as a wild card team. I'm looking at these standings right now. All the teams that are seven and seven are as follows in the NFC. Um, let's see. Obviously, the Bucks lead the division at seven and seven. Uh, Vikings, seven and seven in the sixth seed. Uh, seven seed, the Rams currently sit at seven and seven. Seahawks seven and seven, Saints seven and seven, and then the Falcons six and eight. But the Falcons are basically out of it with uh, the tiebreakers in the NFC South. So yeah, they need the division. Yeah, the the uh, they could sneak in the the Seahawks just won. That was a huge game for the Seahawks. I don't know who they get this week, but the thing got a little tighter in the end. Everyone's talking about how tight the AFC race is. It, the NFC oh, it's is really tight. Just tight. It's tight. It's just not as good. It, the, the teams are just worse. That's why I think people are talking about the AFC a little more. Like um, all, right, all these so teams like, are seven and seven. All the teams in the AFC are nine and six. Or let's you know. look at it. Let's look at it like this. Okay, so the seventh seed in the AFC is the Colts, and the seventh seed in the NFC is the Rams. Who who do you think is better? Colts. I think the Colts are playing very good football right now. See, I think I think that I I think I would take the Rams in that game. Who's home? I think the home whoever's home wins that. Yeah, football true. Game. True. But dude, the dude, the Colts are playing very good football right now. Very but like good. now, now I'm now at the point where like, dude, it's crazy. Holy fuck, the Bills are the ninth seed right now. Yeah, they don't have any tiebreakers. That's why I think the Miami Dolphins have the tiebreaker over them. In that, uh, the Bill, the Dolphins are four and one in the division. They're one loss against the Bills, and the Bills are two and two. Yeah, wait, no, because if the if the Bills beat them, then they'll, they'll Oh wait, no, the, yeah, yeah, no. Dolphins have the tiebreaker. Bills still have two more divisional games. So if they what, end, but if they end with the same exact record, Dolphins win the division. Yeah. Dude, the you know what I so you know how they don't really set the times for any of the week eighteen slates because they like want like all the good games to be in Sunday night football and shit like that. Yeah. I feel yeah. like that game that me and Jesse are going to is going to be Sunday night football. I'm going to be hype. Yeah. Dude, it's, if you look at the week 18 for like if you have tickets for it so you bought tickets and it says like tbd no my brother my brother just gets them through work but like if you look at the espn app right now and you go to week 18 every game just says to be determined yeah uh-huh. but like it's by far the best game on the slate like right now the last game listed is cowboys commanders like that's getting flexed out of sunday night football cowboys commanders will not be falcon saints might be for the division but like I think if Bills Dolphins is for the division, that would get it, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. Like, like they wanted you know, Chiefs Chargers, like that could be. I mean, Chargers are out of it. Never mind. I they wanted Vikings the Lions first. probably too. Yeah, that was the other one. But remember, um, they can't do the Monday night games because the next week's the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably the only. I feel like it's that one or Vikings Lions, but Vikings Lions kind of the hype de- fell off matter. of that when the Vikings weren't good. Browns, Bengals, maybe. I don't think the Steelers, Ravens are going to matter. No, I don't know. Yeah, it'll probably it'll it'll most likely be that game, unless I don't know, unless the Bills fall off here. Or, yeah, unless the Bills lose two straight, which they're playing East the and this, this week. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, what do you think about the four and a half here, Huff? I actually didn't even give a play in the four and a half. I just think the Saints are going to win, or uh, like the Rams are going to win. Rams are going to win. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I think up. I think I actually might make a teaser, teaser this week and get the Rams like plus three or plus three and a half, just in case they lose this game. Yeah, I'll probably just rip a money line on them, but uh, I think they get it done. Weird spread. Stay away from. Yeah, it, I hate four and a half. Too tough. Worst number. Truly. Good stuff there, boys. There out of the Thursday night football game. Two games here on Saturday. The first one being the Cincinnati Bengals heading to Pittsburgh to visit the Steelers. The Bengals, the favorite here, just one and a half points, minus 142 on the money line. Steelers money line at plus 120. The total at an even 37. Trends I got here. Pittsburgh, 13 and four straight up in its last 17 games against Cincinnati. The total has gone under in nine out of the Steelers' last 12 games, but it has gone over in five out of the Cincinnati's last six games. 
What are we thinking here, Huff? Game in Pittsburgh, uh, division match, divisional matchup there. What are we thinking? I really hope we lose this game. I'm going to say exactly what I said last week. It's not going to surprise me if we win this one because it doesn't fucking matter at this point. I hope we lose it. Like I'm totally, totally sold on this season. Uh, they're going with Mason Rudolph, which I'm actually kind of happy about because give him his fucking shot. I mean, it's our third string quarterback. We're down without our, star, our our number one guy. You know what I mean? He hasn't been really that good either. So go to Rudolph, see what he can do. I mean, you got Jake Browning coming in who's been on fire, now won three straight. I, I, if, if you just look at this game, you think the Bengals should kill us. And then you see the lines one and a half and it just doesn't make sense in my opinion. Yeah. I, I'm, I a hundred percent agree with you, Huff, but, um, I, I feel like so many times this year, those lines look so broken with the Steelers. And, and the Steelers I can't, I can't do it with out. the Steelers anymore. I just I mean, take them and then they get blown out. We saw it last week where I don't think that was, I think that was a little bit of a busted line. We saw it week one with the Niners when they were two and a half point underdogs and blown out. Um, I've, I've bought into the Steelers team way too much and they've just let me down too much. And like I said, dude, Jake, I said this from the beginning, you made fun of me. Jake Browning's balling, dude. He's no, playing he is good. incredible he's definitely football. Good. I'm um, fully in on he's good. I, I yeah. shouldn't have said what I said. He's definitely good. <laughs> he is good. He's playing really good football. But um, I, 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 I'm going to go with the Bengals here, minus two and a half. I have to. I'm, I'm, it's, it's sketchy. It's definitely uh, probably going to be a very public play, but this I mean, the Bengals are playing incredible football. This is one. Just don't overthink it. The only thing is, does this count? Does this qualify as a Mike Tomlin in a primetime game as an underdog? Because it's a standalone game. Yes, it does. And everything, (laughs) even like exactly everything tells you to bet the Steelers. His record of always being 500 or seven and seven is a crucial game for that. Um, Exactly. The primetime situation with Mike Tomlin. Everything says take the Steelers. But how can you bet on this team right now after what they've been doing? You can't. You can't. If anything, Um, I'd. Hold my nose and take the under and hope the defense hold, contains Browning a little bit. But it's been scary, dude. He's put up points. Yeah, he's put up yards. 328 or 324 last week, 275 the week before, 354 the week before. He, he, he's good for a turnover a game. I will say that. But, yeah. Uh, Steelers now without KZ. Did you see that hit that he got suspended for the rest of the season for on yeah. Pittman? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Want to talk dirty? about that real quick? You think that was dirty? I think that what do you what, if you're not gonna he's hit him? To do. What can you do there? I get yeah, it. Like, it's a terrible hit, but like he's coming in full speed. He dives last second. How is he supposed? What's he supposed to do? Just fucking vortex away from him and well, not wide with him? Or if he didn't dive, he gets the catch. You have to give up the play. I almost wish the NFL would make a statement where they're just like, it's not necessary. Like, actually believe this because I don't think this is true. Because this is basically what they're saying. They should be like release a statement saying. It, it's not necessary to come in that hard. It's like, okay, so you you don't want us playing 100. percent If so, it's exactly. just then give then, you know what I mean. Like give the play up. They want you to let them make the catch. Yeah. And Tom Brady even said he was like, like these quarterbacks. I mean, you're making these throws. You're putting these guys in, in and it's like a hospital pass in hockey. It's the same exact thing. I mean, yeah. you're getting you're put you're setting them up to get absolutely blown up. And I mean, th- these are football players, man. They're they're they've they've learned to just kill since the second they've been starting to play especially safeties not, that's all they do is look for a receiver they with their do. Head down across i mean the middle. and he dives there it's it, it sucks like it's a terrible hit but i mean he's not just gonna let him catch the football and then and i like Pitt, I, i'm a you're you know i like Pittman. i know i like, like i love Pittman, him i was dude. like i hate to see him go down like that but i was like that wasn't a dirty hit yeah i mean it's it's the league i guess trying to send a message to like i i don't know what are you even like he was almost like already going for the tackle when Pittman started diving. Like, there's yeah. no way he could have like, avoided what he did. Yep. There's absolutely no way. I don't know. I, I don't think he's that big of a piece of our defense, but it's just another reason that, that this line makes no fucking sense. It's the same exact thing as last week, but now we're home. I don't know. I, I, th- like I said, Browning could have three touchdowns. This thing could be over by halftime. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to go with the Bengals minus two and a half. Probably going to yeah. put like two or three units on it. Dude, that's even more than that's worth like taking the straight line and like taking an adjusted line if the public's not crazy on it for them to win by yeah. like Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Get it plus 180 too. You know what like, I mean? Like, I don't if the if this game is close the the Steelers will find a way to win it. But I yeah. think if it's like 21 to 3 like it's either going to be like that or it's going to be I could see a situation close. where the Bengals score the first touchdown and the it doesn't become closer than 7 points from there on. Like yeah. I guess 4 because the Steelers could go kick a field goal but like I don't know. I don't see us going touchdown for touchdown with them. 
I mean, last week you had 13 points and then they put up 27. But also, like, what's scary is, like, Rudolph could just be like, fuck it. This could be the last chance I ever get to start for the Steelers. Like, fuck it. I don't care if I throw four picks. It's it's either going to be four touchdowns or four picks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, is he good enough to ball like that, though? You think he can light up? I don't know. Like, I, I feel like he hasn't been that good, but, like, I, I don't know. There's weapons. Like, it can't be that fucking hard. Like, if, there if you are throw, weapons. It's just so for, frustrating. Except for Najee. He's got the vision of a fucking mouse man i saw someone say he runs like stevie wonder <laughs> <laughs> somebody quoted it was like to go from Le'Veon to this guy is absurd <laughs> Le'Veon had like the best vision ever yeah and he would like stop and you're like what are you doing and then he'd poke or he'd poke a hole for like 15 yards and you're like oh that's what you saw that that's before you yeah yep. he pulled out his ray vision to see the path yeah yeah and then, he, and then he started doing music and sat out a year and ruined his nfl career Unreal. Lots of good stuff there out of our first game on Saturday there, boys. Another one here at 8 o'clock on Saturday. Buffalo Bills, Los Angeles Chargers. Big spread here. Bills minus 12 and a half. Minus 950 on the money line for them. 650 on the money line for the Chargers. 43 and a half is the total. Trends I got here. The total has gone under in six out of Buffalo's last seven games. The Chargers, 5-0 and against the spread in their last five games when playing at home against Buffalo. And the total has gone under in 10 out of the Chargers' last 12 games. Some interesting spreads there, or sorry, interesting trends there with such a high spread. Curious to hear what you guys think. Huff, I know you, um, you know, this, these, it'd be awesome to get these bills to win out <clears throat> from here on out. What do you think in here coming to this one? Yeah, this is a this is a weird spot for me because the Chargers finally fired Brandon Staley. Yeah. I love the I love the interim coach spot. I love taking the team, especially when they're at home with an interim coach. I know nothing about this interim coach. I think this Chargers team is dead. This game also, I I, I just twelve and a half is too much for me to take. If anything, I'm gonna lean on the Bills here. They just they need this game. They're gonna go out to SoFi, get the job done. Josh Allen's making a case, was making a case for the MVP, I think, until he had seven completions in that game. What do you think? Do you think he's still in the race for it? I, I he has like fucking fifteen interceptions in fifteen games. How is he even in the? How is you, his name? You know even? they wanted it. You know they were looking to get him at least in the top five. Dude, they were talking like like four or five weeks ago before they even like. I don't even know what their record was. They were talking about how Allen is like one of the, having one of the worst seasons ever, and now he's in the MVP he's, conversation because they won yeah. two big games. And <laughs> I, I, I think that's insane. And last week, he well, didn't do like much I said, either. I don't. Th- I think last week obviously put that to rest. Whenever you only have seven completions, but obviously you win that game, your running back gets the job done. I think it's gonna be something pretty similar. Bills could uh, b- have a big win here. This might be a game where I tease the Bills down a little bit. I have no faith in uh, Easton Stick. Austin Eckler doesn't look like himself this year. Uh, I, I can't put money on this Chargers team. I like the Bills here. Yeah, um, I'm going to go with the Chargers plus the points here. I like it for a few reasons, not just because the Bills killed us last week. But um, that is one of them. Coming off a very overwhelming performance, um, they're on their high horse, going in as huge f- favorites on the road. A very tough spot to perform well again. Bills are also 2-4 and four on the road this season. Not a good football team on the road. Just um, just haven't been all year. I, I think that this is way too high of a spread. And the Chargers coming up, coming in with an interim head coach. Huff, you said it best, and you ride it every single time. Yeah, I can't do it with and the Chargers. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You do it blind. You did it with the Raiders. I mean, yeah. uh, but I, I, I think that this could be too high of a spread. I think we're, we could see a low-scoring game. But there's one thing that does scare me is how well Josh Allen's playing right now and how well. By the half points at 13, playing. if you're going to take this, don't take 12 and a half. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I hate twelve and a half. I hate that more than four and a half. Like I, I think we're gonna see a low scoring game though. I, I, I think we're gonna see because the I was gonna say I kind of like the under too. I kind, I kind of think the Bills' offense cross country. You know what I mean? Chargers don't score yeah. that many points. I kind of like under forty three and a half as well. Yeah, I mean, that's my main play here. But I, I do like the Chargers to cover twelve and a half or thirteen points if you want to buy the hook. It'll probably if you wait, this one will probably get to thirteen. Unless uh, unless a lot of the the sharp money comes in on the Chargers, then it'll do some reverse line movement. It'll be like eleven by kickoff. Good stuff there, boys. That's gonna wrap up everything we got there on Saturday. Time to move into Sunday now. Couple couple handfuls of games here. Starting off at one o'clock, Indianapolis Colts heading to Atlanta to visit the Falcons. Falcons the favorite here, one and a half points. Here. For them, minus 116 on the money line. Colts minus 102. Total 44 and a half. Let me see what kind of trends I got here. 
Maybe none. This another this line makes no sense, right, Mackie? Sorry, which game is it? Colts, Falcons. I know the Falcons are six and eight, like kind of pesky. They're good at home. Colts should be the favorite here. It's like telling me take the Falcons, but I hate betting on the Falcons. Uh, they burnt me two weeks ago when they played the Bucks at home. They they just don't get up for big games. Could they play spoiler to the Colts here and make the Colts drop an interconference game? I, I I don't know. I won't. I will not be betting on this game. This is the one I truly have no opinion on. I actually really like the Colts in this situation. I I, I think Gardner Minshew is being undervalued by Vegas big time. Um. Did you? I'm, I'm assuming you watched the game last week. Yeah, I watched it. Dude, once it got the light, once they came back, I knew it was over. And the worst part was, I said to my cousin while we were standing there watching the game when the Steelers were up 13, he goes, "You think we can finish this one out?" I go, "Literally last week, I bet on the Colts and they were in Cincinnati, down 14 nothing. They literally immediately two touchdowns tied the game. I was like, it would not be a bad idea to take the Colts spread live. Wish I would have taken the fucking money line or minus 10, minus 12, because they ended up winning by whatever 30 to 13. We didn't score another point, but uh, that Colts team is definitely pesky. Is Pittman back in this game? I don't think so. I know Zach Moss. Hold up. Zach They're Moss, injured. questionable. Michael Pittman, questionable. Hold on. Jonathan Taylor, questionable. There's just so many question marks with the Colts right now. They're so injured. He's doing good in concussion recovery, Michael Pittman. Okay. So he'll probably play. This is a must-win game for them. They have to win this one. Yeah, I, I I love the Colts here, and mainly because I I love Gardner Minshew this year. I think that he is playing incredible, like confident football. He scrambles, he moves, like he'll 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 take a hit for three yards if he needs to. He he's that type of player. And you know, when you're watching a quarterback, and when somebody just has it, you see every like every time, and you and like you bet against them or something. Every time they throw that football, you just kind of know when it's gonna be an, when it when it's gonna be a completion, and then when they're yeah. feeling it. And dude, when he was throwing that football, man, I was like, oh, like this guy is feeling it. He's making passes left and right, um, toe taps and everything. I mean, I, I really like him this year. I think he's going to keep playing really good football. Uh, Colts are also five and two on the uh, on the road this year, so um, they're not really uh, uh, too scared to go on the road and win a football game. Um, even if they have a lot of question marks this week, this week, even if a lot of them don't play, I still think they get it done. Falcons, it's not like the Falcons are uh, any tough team to go in and beat, but um, give me the Colts here. Awesome, boys. Good stuff there out of our first 1 o'clock Sunday matchup. Next one here also at 1 o'clock, Packers and Panthers in Carolina. Packers are the favorite here. Four and a half points, minus 240 on the money line, plus 198 on the money line for the Panthers. Total at 36 and a half trends I got here. The total has gone over in four out of Green Bay's last five games when playing on the road against Carolina. It's the only one I got. What do you guys got here? Packers and Panthers in Carolina. Mac, you want to get us rolling here? Yeah, I like the Packers here, minus the five points. Um, I think this one stays close for the first half and then just kind of gets away from the Panthers towards the end. More low scoring in the first half. I don't think the Panthers are going to put up many points at all. But um, Jordan Love, probably going to have a rough first half, but I think he gets it going in the second half. This one gets away from them. They can win this one by 15 points. Um, Huff, what do you think here? I don't know. Uh, I kind of, I just keep, Liking the Panthers spreads, I just talked myself out of taking them by the time that it's come around to place my bets on Sunday. I'm not going to bet the Panthers in this spot. I think they could cover it, but obviously, Packers, are they still technically in the race in the playoffs? That was a tough loss last week uh, at home to Tampa Bay. They end up losing by the 14 points. I mean, on your home field, it looked like they had every chance to win that game. They just couldn't finish it off. Um, I'm seeing, I want to see here real quick. Yeah, they're in a really stand. tough spot, definitely, but I think they're still... Uh... They're definitely still in contention. Same record as the Falcons, six and eight. Yeah, I mean they need this one. Uh, I definitely could see see Lafleur, you know, go in there and get the job done. I think it could be an ugly game. I kind of like the under and the Panthers to cover. More the under. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I like the under. It's definitely very low. I just think that I don't know. A lot of these Panthers games get away from them towards the end because defenses can't keep up. Yeah, they also just don't score a lot of points. Yeah, because Bryce Young's terrible. Game-winning drive last week. Dude, he didn't even score a touchdown. They won 9-7. to Game-winning drive. They don't ask how, they ask how many. Oh, my God, man. You still think he's better than Derek Carr? It's... Like, tomorrow, tomorrow in a start, who would you take, Derek Carr or Bryce it's, Young? Dude, I'm serious. It depends what roster you're putting him on. 
I, d- I don't think it matters, dude. I really don't. Here, I, wait, wait. That, I, I saved this. I want to show you this. Am I allowed to play something from another podcast in, in, on my mic and we put it in here? Okay. Well, this is from, I believe, whatever Cam Newton's podcast is called. Um, oh, Let's see Panther. here. Fourth and one. The greatest Panther of all time. Bryce, step up in the pocket. That's from the schematic standpoint, right? You may have a, another second or so, but whatever. From Bryce's standpoint, it's like, bro, I need help. <laughs> like, I can't step up because this was one of the things, even for my career, I was always looking for a way out if the pocket wasn't clear. It's like, you see the Aaron Rodgers, you see the Patrick Mahomes, you see these quarterbacks trust their line to give them enough time is this just about his line yeah and and my thing to to his point is do you blame me there's (laughs) seven people around him amongst impact and you expecting this guy to win i agree i I, I I never said his line was good i'm saying he's the first i've never seen so many people protect a first overall pick that's two and twelve he has like nine passing touchdowns in 15 games i understand his line is bad you know who else had a really bad line, line and made it to the super bowl in his second year joe burrow good quarterbacks make it happen good quarterbacks oh, yeah. win football yeah. no no no. i'm not making an excuse for that joe burrow also had a lot better weapons around him. joe joe not burrow paying. had the bottom five line in the league that's what Bryce young has right now but he doesn't okay, have Jamar Chase two and Joe wins. Mixon. okay uh, yeah you're right he doesn't have jamar chase and joe mixon but joe uh, J- Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon didn't win those football games. No, I agree. I know. I know. And Bengals also had a little bit better of a defense, but I think no, I, I, no, I, I need to see I need defense. to see him get a legit coach that's not Frank Reich or an interim head coach. They obviously they don't have a first round pick, so they fucked themselves. It's gonna be very interesting. They have like no money. They just signed Adam Thielen to like a three year deal. I don't think it's gonna work out there for him. I think they're gonna end up moving on, but I don't know. I definitely wouldn't put wouldn't put it past him still being a solid quarterback. Listen, I'm not saying he has no future in the NFL. I'm not saying he's not even going to be good at any point. Um, I'm just saying right now he's not better than Derek Carr. Like tomorrow to start in a game, if I was going to take Derek Carr or Bryce Young just to play in a football game, I'm taking Derek Carr any, like any day. De- Bryce Young or Desmond Ritter? Bryce Young. All right. I will uh, say. All right. All right. But that was also the statement. That was also the statement that you think that Desmond Ritter is be- better than Derek Carr? No, no, I, I totally just like forgot about the Falcons situation. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I always still think like Matt Ryan plays for the Falcons. <laughs> What's crazy is that Baker Mayfield is the best quarterback in this division. Yeah, with that, that uh, dude, who, who would have thought, man? Yeah, he's playing really if, good football. I was gonna say this: if the if the Bucks for some reason decide to move on from him, he's gonna be one of like the most sought after free agent quarterback. Yeah, for sure, dude. He he's always had it. I really think. I just think that his. His time, like when he was good in Cleveland, everything was good. I think that he got injured and there was like a lot of things going on in the front office with him. And then towards the end, they were kind of like veering away from him. But I, th- dude, I think he's, he's always kind of had his head on straight. He's always been playing pretty good football. I just think I agree, he hasn't yeah. really been able to lock in in any, in any real spot. I agree. I've always liked him. It's just, I hated that he went to Cleveland because I loved him at Oklahoma. The money may like the money Mayfield when he was like, when he put the flag at the middle of Ohio yeah, State, like, dude, yeah. I loved him. Then he won the Heisman. Then I was like, fuck, this dude just became a fucking Cleveland Brown. And he was, of course, the guy that, like, turned it around for them. But I was, like, glad for him to be that dude because, like, I obviously liked him. But obviously, I, I liked him with the Rams. I liked him when he was with the, the Panthers. I've just kind of followed him around. I did not think he was going to be good with the Bucks. Obviously, you know, he's killing it down there, leading the division. Yeah, I'm rooting for Get a for home him, playoff but... game. Dude, that'll be sick. I mean... Uh, he's either going to play the Cowboys or the Eagles, so he's probably not going to get it done. But dude, um, I I bet he want I bet he wants that Eagles team. I'd want that Eagles team so bad for a shot in the playoffs if I was why? one of those. If is it, just, of like, they're right they're on the down, like both you guys are on the down, but like the Eagles defense is so vulnerable. And they, the next three weeks they don't play anybody good, so it's not even that they, like they. I mean, I guess they can gain some confidence, but they're not going to be like confident to go play a playoff team. Yeah, on the road. Yeah. Especially like Bucks trouble. fans, like I don't know if they really like expect. Like they definitely didn't expect. They said this year the lo- was the lowest total for season tickets, like lowest ticket prices. Obviously, you know you get your bandwagon fans that are all going to jump back in. That playoff game will be sold out. But those are the those know. are the years where the playoffs are even more electric because like yeah, because you like didn't even like, expect to be there. The Bucks are good this year. That's awesome. 
Yeah, I think that'll be a, that'll be a good matchup. Rolling through these one o'clock games here. The next one up: Cleveland Browns at the Houston Texans. Browns the favorite here. Two and a half points for them. Minus one twenty-two on the money line. Texans plus one hundred four. Total at forty-one and a half. Trends I got here. The total has gone under in six out of Cleveland's last seven games on the road against Houston. Houston seven and one against the spread in their last eight against Cleveland. Another one o'clock game, one o'clock matchup here. What are you guys thinking here? I can't bet against the Browns right now. They're playing great football. Give me the Browns minus two and a half points. I think the Texans do miss the playoffs. This is another big one that they needed to win. Last week, huge win in Tennessee. It was an ugly game. You know, Titans aren't that great. They're eliminated from the playoffs. You heard what Derrick Henry said after the game. He's not, you know, he doesn't think realistically he's going to be there next year, all that stuff. So the Titans are on the downfall. That was a big win, big divisional win for the Texans on the road there. I think Cleveland comes in and puts their playoff hopes to sleep. Cleveland covers the spread. Cleveland minus two and a half. Yeah, I definitely think Cleveland's the more uh, all-around team, but that was a gutsy win by that Texans team last week. Um, divisional game, always hard to put up points, especially those two teams. But um, Case company... Keenum is 3-0 and as a Texans starter. That's actually his last, dope. Yeah, That's his last awesome. two starts were like four years ago or five years ago. Is he is is he just Stroud playing next week or no? I don't know. Do you force him back? Like if he's not ready, or do you just go with the vet that just got it done? You know what I mean? Yeah, I you definitely I think, put Stroud uh, in if he's ready. I, yeah, I think their only chance to win this game is with Stroud for sure. Yeah, <clears throat> but um, I think the I think the Browns will get it done anyway. Um, just an all around better team. That defense is gonna be, is gonna make that Texans offense hell. We've seen the Texans offense struggle the last few weeks uh, against the Jets, only putting up six points last week. Um, took them a while to get to 16 and then um, ended up getting it done in overtime. But uh, yeah, I think a low scoring game here, but the Browns definitely get it done. Browns are good, man. Even without Deshaun Watson, without Nick Chubb, this Browns team is good. Dude, they, yeah, they're fun. And they're fun with Flacco. Yeah, definitely. You, you love to see Flacco succeed there, too. And they just they're like the Ravens the past couple of years where they just keep getting injuries and they're just like they just keep on winning games. Finding a way. Like, finding a way. It's that AFC set or North, man. Yeah, those two teams are definitely legit. That'd be great. That'd be a great first round playoff matchup. What, Ravens Browns? Yeah. Alrighty, boys, let's keep it moving here. Next matchup Detroit Lions at the Minnesota Vikings here. Another one o'clock. Lions, the favorite. Three points for them. Minus 176 on the money line. 46 and a half is the total. Got a couple trends for this one. Detroit 5-0 and against the spread in their last five games against Minnesota. The total has gone over in, last five, in five out of the last six games between these clubs. And Minnesota is 5-0 and straight up in their last five games when playing at home against Detroit. Pretty interesting there. Uh, trends going very which way's direction. What are you guys thinking here in this and just another 1 o'clock matchup here in Week 16? Lions, I remember a stat from a couple weeks ago. Lions also have the best uh, road ATS record as a three or as a two and a half or four point window favorite uh, that plays in this game. Obviously, divisional matchup, home underdog is tough to go against this Vikings team who just lost a close one. They're still technically in it. I like the Lions to put the, the Vikings kind of playoff hopes to sleep here. Give me the Lions. It's a tough number three. You know, it's going to be three and a half by the time this game goes on Sunday. I, see I like the lines. Half, yeah. <laughs> I like the I like the lines to get the I see minus three, minus one twenty, so it's about to be three and a half. So yeah, um that's even. Yeah. It's I don't love it. I put it that way. It's not I don't think it's as easy as it looks. Mullins you know, found some magic for that Vikings team, a pretty injured team, but Flores has that defense playing pretty good. I know Browning had a great game last week on his home field. This game's up in Minnesota in the dome. Divisional game. I just think Jared Goff gets it done. Yeah, listen, um, I, I think the Lions will get it done, too. But we, we could also see a Lions team that comes out the, um, like, uh, like, like they did against the Ravens or something. We've seen this team come out and not put up points, struggle to put up points. We've also seen this, seen this team come out and uh, score a touchdown every drive. So uh, it's, it's, I, I think the Lions will get it done. I think they'll kind of light it up. They're in a dome, so it's not, nothing like they have to worry about weather conditions or anything. Jared Goss playing really good football. Um, but Jameer you know, I, great. You, you can't be surprised if he goes out there and uh and, and they and they struggle to put up points, struggle to get complete drives. 
see a lot of three and outs. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's definitely a big question mark next to this one. I, I'm probably not going to have a play on it, but I do like the Lions minus three and a half. Yeah, I definitely lean with that. Jameer Gibbs has been electric. You're going to see a lot of that on Sunday on your ESPN fantasy app as well. Yeah, I'm not going to see any uh, his name at all. A lot of David Montgomery, I think. You I think CD. Him? I think CD Lamb's going to sit this one out as well. <laughs> Good one. What's going on, everybody? Jesse from Hit the Books here. I want to tell you a little bit about Zencaster. We use Zencaster because it's the best solution for us to record our episodes each week with four of us in different locations. Coordination is hard, and Zencaster makes that easy. Like I said, it's so easy. It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Just log in with your browser and start recording a high-quality podcast right away. Record studio-quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups. Ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality even if the connection is unstable. Zencaster's an all-in-one platform. If you've thought about podcasting before and realized that you need a lot of different tools and services, those days are over. Zencaster's all-in-one podcasting platform. You can create a podcast all in one place and dist- distribute to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other major destinations. If you're interested, go to Zencaster.com slash pricing. Use our code Hit the Books, and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same experience, easy experience we do, with all our podcasting and content needs, it's time to share your story. Make sure to use our link in the description below or our offer code hit the books at zencaster.com slash pricing for 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. All righty, let's keep it moving here. Another game with the spread of three, the commanders heading to New York to visit the Jets. The Jets, the favorite here, minus three for them. Their money line, minus 168, and the total at 37 and a half. Some trends here. The total has gone over in six out of Washington's last seven games against the Jets, as well as over in four out of the five of their last games. Jets 4-0-1 against the spread in their last five games against Washington as well. Just another one o'clock game here. Commanders losing their last five. Probably actually, it's probably more than that. That's all I can see back to. But what are you guys thinking here? Another one o'clock matchup here. 37 and a half, kind of a low spread coming into this match this week. What do we got? Yeah, this is an ugly one. Definitely the snooze fest of the week. Uh, you get the commanders, like you said, just haven't been playing good football. Terrible time management in that game last week. They really had a chance to come back uh, against the Rams down 14 late. They wasted so much time. Um, I took a commander's team total under and they just fucking blew it. They were trying to backdoor that game. Uh, they just couldn't get it done. Uh, they fucked my team total. I live bet like under 16 and a half. They ended with 20. Hate to see that, but I like the commanders to cover the number here. I think the Jets are trying to lose games. Yeah. Uh, I think I both teams are really trying to lose games. I would not. This is the game. Like, you can't bet on this game this week. You absolutely you can't bet on this game. Yeah, I like the over. I like the over. I don't like the a side. Over. I do like the over. Look at the look at the commanders last few games. They give up so many points. Twenty eight last week, forty five the week before, forty two the week before. Zach Wilson is is going to be able to let it fly. Um, we saw it against the Texans. He put up thirty points in the second half. They had, it was zero zero at halftime. He was letting it fly in the second half. I think it's going to be a lot like this. Um, right? Zach Wilson. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he got like a concussion last week. He left that game. Yeah, but yeah, he remained. Like, this could be Simeon. Do you still right, take well, it with Simeon? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That that definitely uh, changed it. I don't know because the Commanders, I mean. They commanders still are going to score points. I agree. But, like, it's the Jets' defense. The commanders' defense is bad, I guess. Yeah, I see what you're saying. 37 is low. We could see just, like, one quarter. I don't know. Maybe I don't yeah. love a play. If Zach Wilson's playing, I do <laughs> like the silver. <laughs> if Zach Wilson's playing, I like the silver. Maybe a teaser here. Over 31 and a half. Commanders plus 10. That's good. I like that. Yeah. <clears throat> All righty, boys. Let's jump into this final one o'clock matchup here in week 16. The Seattle Seahawks and the Tennessee Titans in Nashville. The Seahawks are the favorite here. Two and a half points for them. Minus 142 on the money line. 41 and a half is the total. Trends I got here, Seattle, 4-1 and one against the spread in their last five. Seattle, or sorry, uh, Tennessee, 6-1 and one against the spread in their last seven games against Seattle. And 4-1 and one against the spread in their last five games at home against Seattle. 
game in Nashville here. 41 and a half the total, two and a half the spread. What do you guys think here? Final one o'clock matchup. This has got to be one of the most random matchups you could name. If you just name two random NFL teams that don't really play each other too often, Seattle, don't know each Tennessee. other. Yeah, Seattle versus Tennessee. Uh, obviously, NFC West, AFC South, two teams that don't know too much about each other. Seahawks need this one. Titans this are sketchy, eliminated. Man. Yeah, this is a weird game because the Titans sketchy. are out of it. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, I'm probably not going to take it, but the Seahawks need this more. Uh, you got to think they come in there with a good. Uh, what's their road record? I don't really know too much. Wait, about this is Seahawks. why it's sketchy. Titans are four and three at home, one and six on the road. Seahawks are five and two at home, two and five on the road. Yeah, that's weird. So that's why it's really sketchy. But I mean, I, I, mm. yeah, that's weird. Um, I'll, I'll fall into the trap. I'll take Seattle. This is a must-win situation. When playoffs are on the line, I think I'm gonna just take all I the take everything out else off off the plate and uh i'm just gonna roll the seahawks yeah, I think the seahawks Dude, are actually you know what i just team. thought about though is they what? might be going with Tannehill in this game because levis got hurt Tannehill sucks dude i don't know i just feel like it's like a Tannehill at home you just go to the vintage chuckle? give it to henry yeah like I, I don't know i feel like they're just like fuck it you know what uh i think do you think the seahawks are a playoff team no i don't i honestly don't i think the rams I, are i kind of do man i kind of do they played the cowboys tight they just beat the eagles yeah I don't know, but um, not with Drew Locke. I don't want to see them in the playoffs. Drew Locke just led a 92-yard touchdown <laughs> drive to beat the oh, 10 and three Eagles. Now nah, you're right, but um, I think Geno's back next week. He almost played this week. I don't know. Weird game. I'll lock it in. Seahawks minus three. You'll see it on my card. I definitely agree. The, I have two and a half. I like the yeah. I like Seahawks. It's just weird. Derrick Henry's going to score a touchdown. I'll probably take that, too. No way yeah, he goes two weeks without scoring. That's a good bet. Good stuff, boys. Let's jump into these 4 o'clock matchups here on Sunday. The Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, the Bucks are the favorite here. Just one and a half points. Both money lines at minus 108. And the total at 43 and a half. Trends I got here, Jacksonville 9-1 and one against the spread in their last 10 games on the road. Jacksonville 5-1 and one straight up in its last six games on the road. The total has gone over in four out of Tampa Bay's last five games. What do we like here? Jags and Bucks. Battle of uh, Florida here. Huff, why don't you get us rolling here? First 4 o'clock matchup. Yeah, this is actually my favorite play of the week. I absolutely love the Jaguars in this spot. This is a perfect buy low spot on the Jaguars coming off two losses. They just get crushed by the Ravens. They lose in Cleveland. Perfect buy low spot on the Jaguars against an inferior opponent who's getting the, the minus one and a half in a pick spot. I love the Jaguars to go into Tampa Bay and get a win. Jags have lost three straight. Three straight. Like it even more. Like I, I truly think they got to get back at some point. I know it's going against a trend. This is an opponent they can beat. Interconference game, like Jesse said, Battle of Florida. They're both down there. Like this isn't really much of a road game. I love the Jaguars here. Yeah, I don't love a play here. I I, I do kind of lean on the Jaguars, but every, I can't keep fading this Bucks team. I faded him twice in a, twice in a row. Um, Ace is taking him twice in a row, and he's and he's 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 hitting on him left and right. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of money on the Jaguars, even though they're sliding. It's still the Jaguars. It's still Trevor Lawrence. Um, I don't know how good this Jaguars team actually is. I mean, uh, this could just be a slide. We've seen a lot of three game losing streaks from the top teams this this year, but. Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't really trust this Jaguars team. I lean them in this game at the better team, but I'm not going to have a plan on this one, I don't think. What do you think, Huff? You think the Jags are, are, are uh, legit? Or? I think, the, I, I think I, I'd want, I want them as a playoff team. I definitely want If you them. think about it, if you really think about it, until last year, I mean, they started the season, they were terrible. I think they started like 4-7, and 4-8. and eight. They came back, they went on a huge winning streak, six-game winning streak, seven-game winning streak. And won one playoff game where they came back from thirty three nothing, thirty to nothing. Other than that, the Jaguars have not done like they've. They're, what has solidified them to be a powerhouse in the AFC, and they and they kind of get act, and they kind of get treated like one. I don't know. I just feel like everyone has so much faith in Trevor Lawrence. And, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it's had, just like, the he quarterback. Hasn't proved as much as it seems like he has. Yeah, and the, I don't know. The defense is playing good ball. At least they were before that Ravens game. I I just think this is a perfect kind of like I hate to say get right because they're obviously you know the Bucks are a playoff team as well. But I don't know. I like the ja I like the Jags in this spot to get a big win, much needed win. 
Yeah, I like them as well, but I I I don't I don't like it enough just yet. I'll have to look at it a little more. Alrighty, boys, let's keep it moving here. Another four o'clock matchup: the Arizona Cardinals and the Chicago Bears in Chicago. The Bears are the favorite here, four and a half points. Their money line minus two hundred five, and the total at forty four and a half. Trends I got here: total has gone under in the last five Arizona Cardinals matchups on the road. Arizona 5-1 and one against the spread in their last six games against Chicago, and the total's gone under in six out of Chicago's last seven games. Trends there pointing at Arizona spread and the under. What do you guys got here? I, I think the Bears get it done. I think the Bears have been playing pretty good football. They won three straight, if I'm not mistaken, before last week, and uh, they were right there with, with them last week for uh, lost 2017. Probably should have won with that Hail Mary, but just couldn't hold on. I, I don't even know who it was, but um, Bears are playing pretty good football. Cardinals, I think, are probably the second or third worst team in the league. Um, sketchy number, four and a half. I don't think the Bears should be four and a half favorites over anybody, but um, I think they get it done at least if they uh, get the W in the win column. But, um, Huff, what do you think here? Yeah, I also like the Bears here. I think they killed their playoff hopes last week with that drop to Hail Mary, but uh, I like them to get a win here at home against an inferior Cardinals team. I think Cardinals could keep it close. Bears don't like to really cover spreads as a favorite. Not a team you'd really love to see as a four and a half point favorite, but I do think the Bears get the win. Dude, I'm so fucking pissed at the Bruins. They gave up a goal. You give a fucking power play, dude. Every time. It's so fucking annoying. Every time I take the Bruins, they fucking fuck me. Never bet on them. I never uh, dude, do. I can't. Like, I can't call never their do. games. It's so annoying. All righty, another four o'clock match or final four o'clock matchup here. Dallas Cowboys in Miami face the Miami Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins, the favorite here, just one and a half points. Their money line minus one twenty. Cowboys money line at plus one hundred two in the total. Pretty high one there at fifty one and a half. Trends I got here: Dolphins eighteen and three straight up, fifteen and six against the spread in their last twenty one games at home. Cowboys eleven and three against the spread in their last fourteen games played in December. And the under is eight and three in Dallas's last eleven games on the road. Mackey, how are your Cowboys going to fare here this week in Miami? Yeah, keep it plain and simple. This Cowboys team is not going to lose two straight games to the AFC East. Um, I'm going to go with the Cowboys here. I think it's going to be a shootout. I think both teams are going to put up points. Um, might get, it might be off to a little bit of a slow start, but I do, I do think it still hits the over. Um, Dak's going to get back. Terrible weather conditions last week. I'm going to blame it on that. Um, not, not blame the loss on that. I'm going to blame his performance, his uh, pass yards and everything on that. But um, I think he gets back into it this week. I think the offense rolls. Um, and I think the defense just steps up a little more than Dolphins do. So um, give me the Cowboys. Much must-win game. They know that they need to be home for these playoffs, and this is the game that they need to win. Um, so I'm going to trust them to get it done here. I am going to go with the Dolphins here. I think the Dolphins are – they You're need this wrong. Game. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I just think that it's kind of like that Bills game. The, the fa- I'm just going with the favorite. Let the line tell me who I think is going to win. I truly think the Dolphins defend their home field here and get the job done. I think a healthier Tyreek Hill, like, uh, I, I just love the Dolphins at home. I think Mostert gets in once or twice. Like, dude, he's, dude's a touchdown machine. Uh, Tua obviously showed that he can get it done without Tyreek last week. Uh, obviously a great defense coming to town in Dallas. I think it's going to be a great matchup. I like the over as well. Uh, I think the Dolphins get the win. Good stuff there, boys. Let's jump into our Sunday night football matchup here in Week 16. The New England Patriots. At the Denver Broncos, heading to mile high. Seven points even on the spread here for the Broncos. Minus 330 on the money line. Total at a low, 34 and a half. Trends I got here. Patriots 2 and 13 straight up in their last 15 games on the, or, sorry, 15 games as the underdog. Broncos 18 and 5 straight up in their last 23 games at home to New England. Patriots 4, 16 and 1 against the spread in their last 21 games. Broncos 1 and 8 against the spread in their last nine games played in week 16. Let's send it over to Ace. Ace, what do you got for us here this week? Oh, wait, Ace isn't here this week. Uh, okay. oh, Sorry, I buddy. You, I thought you had like something planned out that he was going <laughs> no. yeah, to do. Yeah, me too. That's what I was thinking for a second. I, like, I was texting and like, stopped texting for a second. I'm like, wait, is he about to join? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, nothing planned here special this week, but what do you guys got this week with yeah, an a, absent Ace? What a shitty game to end with such a great slate of football, too. But, um... I don't know. Who wants to watch the Patriots Sunday football? I'm going to go with the Broncos here. I think they get back on track. 
Um, this could be a playoff team. I know they're on the outside uh, looking in after a pretty bad uh, defensive performance last week against the Lions, but I, I, I still like this Broncos team. I think their playoff potential, um, they need this win, I think, and I think they uh, don't really play around. I think they get it done uh, pretty easily. Yeah, I agree. I like the Broncos here at home. Uh, not a good showing last week in, in Denver. Couldn't cover Sam Laporta to save their life. Obviously, let him go off for the hat trick. Uh, tough game. That was a that was a get right game for the Lions. Lions look great at home as they typically do. Uh, I like the Broncos coming back home in the prime time to get the job done. Seven points is a lot for this offense, but the Patriots aren't good at all. Uh, yeah, give me the give me the Broncos here minus the seven. Yo, Huff, should I should I let uh, Deontay Johnson put up twenty five on your ass this week or Steelers might not put up a touchdown, dude? Where, how's he gonna get twenty five? Everything's going to him. <laughs> He's good for a tidy game. He has like two. Is he doesn't have two this season? I don't know. He scored one last game, and I was like, "Shit, I should have started him." He had like eighteen yeah. points last week. He's the riskiest start in fantasy. I'm like the I, I drafted him this year too, and I was like, I never start him just because I'm so fucking biased that he drops everything. I know, but I can't start Saquon. Can't trust him against the Eagles. Yeah, no way. I was kind of hoping he started him. No, he, had, <laughs> he had five points last week, man. I can't. I can't trust him again. But I also might play Zay Flowers, but he's going against the Niners. I might play Lockett. I could play Lockett. I might play Lockett. Lockett would be a good choice against Tennessee. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. You'll see. You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. All right, boys. Let's keep it moving here. Monday, Christmas three Day. matchups. Yeah, lots of stuff. Three matches. Matchups on Christmas Day, starting off at 1 o'clock. Las Vegas Raiders at the Kansas City Chiefs, an even 10 point spread here in favor of the Chiefs. Minus 480 on the money line. The total is 41 and a half. Trends I got here Raiders, 3 and 18 straight up in their last 21 games against Kansas City. Chiefs, 14 and 1 straight up in their last 15 divisional games. And the Raiders, 1 and 7 straight up in their past eight road games. Question is, is 10 points the right spread for the Chiefs? What do you guys think here in this first Monday uh, Christmas Day matchup? Yeah, last, uh, I'm just going to say this real quick. Last time we saw a team put up over 60 points, it was the Dolphins put up 70. The following week, they were underdogs to the Bills, and we all know how that went. Um, so we saw the Raiders put up 63 last week. Obviously, way different than the Dolphins. Very uncharacteristic for the Raiders to do that. But going into Kansas City, I think they're going to get shelled. I think they're going to lose by 30. I think uh, Kansas City rolls this game. We already saw Kansas City go into Las Vegas, beat them 31-14. They put up like 31 unanswered, too, if I'm not Mm-hmm. They were up 14. Raiders were up 14, and then they yeah. flipped the whole game. It was like yeah. that Colts Steelers game. Same, same exact situation. Yep. So um, I think the Chiefs just roll at home, get it done. Pat Mahomes got to stop playing around. They need some confidence over there. They need some momentum. Kadarius Tony has to catch the fucking football. Um, and I, I think they roll cover 10 points. Yeah. Yeah. I do, I, I do agree. I think uh, I don't want to overthink this one. I like the Chiefs to, to get the job done at home. Uh, standalone game. Chiefs love, you know, the one o'clock ass kicking. Uh, this could be ugly. I like the Chiefs. Pretty cut and dry game, to be honest with you. I'm with you guys. Moving forward here, the New York Giants in the Philadelphia Eagles at 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Christmas Day. Eagles, the favorite here, 11.5 points for them, minus 6.20 on the money line, and the total at 42.5 trends I got here. Eagles, 11-1 straight up in their last 12 games at home against the Giants. Eagles, 2-7 and seven against the spread in their last nine on the road. And 11 out of the past 14 meetings here have played to the under. What are you guys thinking here? Monday, 4.30 p.m. I haven't loved a lot of big spreads this year. I love the Giants here, plus the 11 points, uh, 11 and a half. Uh, it's a weird number because uh, not many games end you know, with an 11-point loss, 31-20. I don't think this one's going to be that high scoring, but uh, that's just the first one that comes to mind. I like the Giants here to, get to, to stay within the number of 11 and a half. I don't know if I'm going to go with it. Just obviously, I hate betting against this Eagles team. I wish I would have done it last night uh, in Seattle, but they don't look good, and uh, they shouldn't be a 12-point favorite against anyone. I think the Giants in a divisional matchup are able to keep it close, put up some points. Uh, Tommy DeVito get back to you know who we thought he was the past couple of weeks after that three-game win streak with a tough loss down in New Orleans, but um, I-, I like the Giants to go into Philly and keep things close in a divisional matchup. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you here, but I also wouldn't be surprised if the Eagles go in and put up 35 and just kind of get back on track here. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. Giants, Giants coming off a pretty shitty performance, but I think they need to bounce back here. It's a divisional game. It's a very similar yeah. team to what we saw last year. What just happened? 
Devils scored first. I have another one. Devils and Avs. How many parlays you got? Two. <laughs> one already lost. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think the Giants kind of get back on track here. I don't think they're really. I mean, I don't think they're a good team at all. But I think that they, I don't think they're that bad. And I think that this divisional matchup, Giants have seen them not very similar team last year. Um, yeah, keep it close. I think the Eagles. Uh, this Eagles team's playing like shit. They lost three straight. They got no mojo. Um, let's see. Let's see Danny DeVito go in there and uh, put up some touchdowns, huh? I, I'm all I showed my mom and my dad all the DeVito stuff because my mom is like I mean obviously my mom's Italian my dad's not my mom loves all the like I was showing her all the videos of the news of his family's tailgate and stuff it was so funny I didn't really like watch most of those videos his parents are hilarious you see his, his agent dad. yeah dude the agent's hilarious the agent Did you see what he wore to the game so is well. his the national green, his Italian suit. American yeah that was awesome That's great. Yeah. that dude's all time that guy's making a name for himself I'll tell you that. He's got the Italian horn on. They all wear the horn. It's so yeah. funny. <laughs> but yeah, give me the Giants plus 12. Cover a big spread here. Let's go. Good stuff, boys. Let's jump into this final matchup here this week. Baltimore Ravens, San Francisco 49ers, Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern. The 49ers are the favorite here. Five and a half points for them. Minus 230 on the money line in the total at 46 and a half. Trends I got here. Ravens 24 and 1 against the spread in their last 25 games as the underdog. Also 21 and 3 straight up in their last 24 non conference games. 49ers 19 and 2 straight up in their last 21 games at home. Final one o'clock or final game here in the week 16 slate. What do you guys got here? Five and a half points. Kind of an odd spread. I I have a take on this game. I like the Ravens to win this game, not because of the Monday night trends, not because the underdogs keep winning. Here's why I like the Ravens to win this game. I think the 49ers can afford to lose this one. I know they're trying to lock up that one seed. Ravens are playing for a one seed as well. This game, the winner is the one seed in their division or in their conference, even though I think the Niners just got some help by the Cowboys and Eagles losing. I like the Ravens to win this one for one reason. If this is, obviously, this is everyone's Super Bowl matchup pick. They think the Ravens and the Niners, everyone always just picks the one seed. My theory is if they were to play in the Super Bowl, the Niners would win. So I like the theory that the Ravens beat them in the regular season. I like the Ravens at plus 190. I think it's a juicy line. Uh, maybe take the points as well, but I like the Ravens in the spot. I really do. I like the theory, but I I just I don't think the Ravens get there toward, at the end of the season. I agree. Um, I I don't. I believe me. That's not me saying the Ravens are going to the Super Bowl. That's just like I like that if they I mean, do get there. If it I is like set the, up. If it is yeah. set up for it, yep. But um, I'm gonna go with the Niners here. I think the Niners are definitely just like the more all better, way better all around team. Ravens yeah. I don't playing. know if I'm actually gonna bet that. That's more just like my the the yeah. fucking. I mean, it makes sense. My head. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense. But um, Ravens, I mean, I'm not discrediting them at all. They've been playing really good football. They even just lit up that Jaguars team um, on the road, I think. They're on the road, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, In Jacksonville, They're playing yeah. really good football. The defense is playing really good football. But this Niners team, just find a weak spot on that roster, and, and, and you, you'll, uh, you'll, be, you'll be showing me some news. I think that this team's just playing incredible football. Christian McCaffrey, I mean, how can you stop that, man? And even if you wanted to, they have so many other weapons. Um, that you just can't slow them down. The defense... Um, I, I think their defense will do fine with containing Lamar Jackson. I think the Eagles or Eagles, I think the Ravens will struggle to put up points. And I don't think the Niners are going to have any real, real big struggles. Um, I think they'll get the job done. Five and a half. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's heavy. I feel like it's a little too big, but um, I don't know. I think maybe it's a little sketchy too big. You know what I mean? But um, it could be like a six point game, seven point game where Lamar Jackson needs to score a touchdown at the end. Just can't get it done. Uh, I'm going to go with the minus five and a half. I think the Niners get it done. Yeah, I, I also think if, like in my case right now, I haven't really taken the Ravens uh, spread much this year. Obviously, they continue to cover games. Um, in the past couple of weeks, they've been obviously covering against the Jags. I know they didn't cover against the Ravens in that, or the Rams in that spot at home, but I think this is a bad spot for me to jump on the Ravens. So that's why I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and just card them to win a game as a five-point underdog against the number yeah, one. Yeah, you're all the value now. now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm a little iffy on if that actually is going to be on uh, my card, obviously. but. Uh, if anything, I'd take the points. I, I think, like, all right, you tease the Ravens up to 13 and a half. Do they lose by 14? I, 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 I guess, if it, I, yeah. I think that there is a scenario where they could lose by 14. I agree. I don't think any, they do. I don't get Any game with the Niners, there's no, there's no spread that's safe against the Niners. There is, there is definitely a scenario. Like, it could happen. It could definitely, like, it's not like a thousand to one odds thing. Like, it could definitely happen. But, the one yeah. I would tease is the Giants. Get the Giants to, like, 21 and a half. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I love that Commanders tease too. Yeah, 
plus 10 on that. But yeah, um, you like doing the same game teasers. I I like just taking a bunch of spreads. I love it. But I also I like what you do too. I just my I usually do teasers in primetime games. Yeah, I know what you mean. Seahawks, dude. I wish I had done that Seahawks and under one last night. As soon as you sent me that, I was like, fuck, it's too late to lock this in, but I might just live bet it if I get a good shot at it. And then I just like fell asleep watching that game and I woke up and the Seahawks had the ball but on that last drive. Yeah. I was like, please tell me Hurts didn't throw an interception. I'm like, oh, yeah, he did. Cool. <laughs> Dude, I, I was waiting for him to throw one. I, I don't know why I thought that him. was a fucking good bet. He just kept airing it out. I don't know. It was a pretty good bet until 10 minutes left in the game. Yeah, he was playing. He was playing like close to the vest. So he was running a lot early. I was like, all right, he might just not throw the ball a lot. So he I was making. Get there. He was making a few sketchy throws, and the second he aired it downfield, it was like third and four or second. I didn't and see four. the first interception. Was it just air it out, or was it a tip ball? Or it was. It honestly was pass interference, but um, it didn't really affect the play. Um, I would have been. It was a one on one, and he he kind of <laughs> underthrew it. He threw it to the left. He threw it to, more towards the defender, um, and it was it was it was a pretty easy interception. But the second one was fucking. Incredible. Yeah, didn't he just air it out? Well, the second one, it was kind of like it probably they, shouldn't. What, it shouldn't was have it been the second one that sealed the game. Like the Seahawks yeah. were up, Eagles got the ball back, and he was just trying to get downfield fast. Yeah, it shouldn't. That's it shouldn't have been an interception, but it also shouldn't have been a completion. The interception was insane, but it it was definitely not like a. It was yeah. like a, more of like a hail mary. I think I saw it on. I think I saw it on Instagram today. Was that the dude where his knee was like sliding or his toe was sliding or something? His leg was going out of bounds, and then it hits his own player's leg. Pushes his leg back and bounds, got the foot down, gets the other foot down. The <laughs> it was insane. It was like that shit. Like that only happens when I bet against something. Yeah, that never yeah. happens when I need it to go the other way. Yeah, his leg couldn't have pushed him out of bounds. No. no <laughs> yeah. Shot. Right. Yeah. Alrighty, why don't we take a little dive into this playoff picture here? Coming into Week 16, coming out of the AFC, the Ravens, the only team to clinch a spot there. In the NFC, the 49ers, Cowboys, and Eagles all clinching a spot in their respective uh, in their respective conference. What else do you guys like here coming into Week 16? As looks like there could be some movement on the back end, more than it's more so the front end. What are you guys thinking? Yeah, uh, well, I'll, I'll kind of read this off. Ace wanted to, obviously, he's not here. He wanted me to get this off. So a couple playoff predictions. Obviously, the wild cards on the AFC and the NFC are pretty tight, as we said. Uh, we'll start with his AFC picks for the wild card spots. He does have Cleveland locking up that number one wild card spot, uh, keeping up with the Bengals right behind them as the second wild card spot, continuing on uh, to put that playoff hope alive. And then the seventh seed is the Bills. Uh, thinking the Bills could win it all. I thought he was a, a Patriots fan. Crazy to hear that coming from a Patriots fan. He wants a Bill. He thinks the Bills could win the Super Bowl. I would never say that about the Ravens. I don't care how yeah. fucking good they are. Uh, and then in the NFC has the Bucks to uh, close out and win the NFC South, meaning that the Eagles would be the number one wild card in the NFC, uh, with the Rams as the sixth seed and Seahawks sneaking in as that last team uh, as the seven seed. Mackie, do you have any disagreement? Any who are your teams, your wild card teams that you have getting in? Uh, we'll start in the AFC. We'll go with yours, and then I'll go with mine. Um, yeah, I I do have the same teams in the AFC. I think that the Bills will be the two seed, though. I think they'll get above the Bengals. No Colts. Um, you you love these Colts, and they get you think they get a win this week. Did I just yeah, throw you. Right. I just yeah, threw you, you just, all off. You just threw me a curveball. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I honestly wasn't. Someone's got to lose. Someone has to lose between Cincy, Indy. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. <laughs> Who? So the Colts. Get all the right. Falcons. All right. Yeah. Colts okay. Get the Falcons this week. Who do the Colts have week eight, week eighteen? We're getting we're getting Browns Browns with the five seed. Colts six seed. Bills seven seed. I think the Bengals. Bengals got still got to play the. Uh, they got to play the Browns week eighteen. They got to play the Chiefs in Arrowhead week seventeen. I think that's gonna be a little too much for them. Um, Bengals get get bounced. I think the Browns stay in. Um, I don't think. I don't think any of the playoff teams have a real chance at at, at going any very far. I think the Bills. Um, we we've seen the Bills in the playoffs multiple times. We've seen way better rosters. Um, we know that Bills defense is still a little banged up. Um, I, I, I cannot trust that team to go on the road, especially this year. They're two and four on the road. 
go on the road in either what Kansas City, you got to go to probably not Baltimore first round, but um, you're going to a good team week one. It's not going to be easy for them. I think they're going to get bounced first round, but um, they, they, I think they'll get there at least. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is more the fan in me, but uh, I do. I still think the Broncos can squeak in as a 7-7. Seven and seven. They have three very winnable games to end their season. Uh, they get, obviously, I just forget who we just said they would get this week, a uh, seven-point favorite against the Patriots, Patriots at home uh, on a Sunday night game, Chargers at home, and Here's then the in thing. Vegas. Here's the thing. They, they, they finish the season 10-7. and seven. Do they make the playoffs? See, that's the thing is it, it very much they need teams to lose. They need, to, they need like Indy to lose this week to the Falcons bad. They need the uh, Texans to lose bad. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to make a, take a little long shot here and say it goes Browns, Bills, Broncos. Broncos. Okay. I like that. I like that because I do, I do think the Broncos finish 10-7. and seven. I just don't think it'll be enough. Yeah, it's gonna come down to tiebreakers. Like, all right, so you said since like Cincinnati, those are that's a tough ending schedule, like you just said. Cincinnati's, I think they're done. I think they're caked. And let's look at the Colts. So let's take a look at the Colts. Raiders, Texans, both home. Hmm. And the Colts have the game on the Broncos. The the Col- if the Colts win this game this week, they're gonna make the playoffs. I think. Dude, it's gonna be so tight, man. You're gonna have to wait to see all the tiebreakers and everything because when everyone's yeah. tied like that. I mean, it comes. It's it's just crazy, dude. I just it's really like, want to. See, I just love to see the Broncos get in after the start of the season they had. I mean, I think they deserve it. It was tough, tough first six games, obviously. Because then you know what they would get is if it ended if it ended right now, but the Broncos were the seven seed and they flipped with the Colts, they'd Miami. go to Miami for the rematch of the seventy to twenty game, the highest scoring game of the season. That would be oh, a great be narrative awesome. for the first round of the playoffs. That'd be cool. Sean Payton would have that is the ultimate revenge game on your mind. I mean, you got to assume they finish the season ten and seven. I don't think they drop any of those yeah, games. Yeah, uh, you beat the Patriots week. You beat Broncos the Chargers. Uh, you go to Las Vegas week 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 eighteen. I mean, I don't that's think the fu- lose. that's the ske- that's the kind of sketchy game, divisional game on the road. You win this game, you're in the playoffs. Those are the ones that teams always love to fuck up in. I'd love to see the Broncos in, but I think we can narrow it down to those four teams at least. Um, Broncos being the fourth team. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Broncos, could, if they end the season 10-7, and seven, they're right there, if not in. Definitely, yeah. You know what they're probably, think, they're probably going to need? Losing this week, they're so. probably going to need a Dolphins win week 18 if the Bills win the next two games. Because yep. I bet you they have the tiebreaker over the Bills, but Bills, well, Bills yeah, only they have beat six the Bills losses right now. Does it? it doesn't come but, down to head-to-head immediately, does it? If, it, if they're the only two teams. Okay. Like the Broncos if, beat the Bills, which is big. If they're the only two 10 and 7 teams, it will go head to head. But if there's one other team, it won't. So I'm saying, is it crazy to say that the nine, right now the current 9 seed and the 11 seed in the AFC are both going to make it? But like, it is realistic. It, it's not that crazy just because, I mean, it's all I have no game. faith. I have, no, uh, like, I have no faith in obviously the Steelers to make it. They're right there in that push. And same thing with the Texans. I th- we're, the Texans so we're kicking Steelers week. and Texans out. Yeah. We're basically kicking the Bengals out, too. That's just such a tough game. Mahomes is going to need that game so bad for an extra home playoff game. You know what I mean? Some bullshit. Like, I don't know. I don't like kicking out Jake Browning. <laughs> it's going to be – this weekend's going to tell a lot. A few teams deserve it. Not everyone's going to make it. I mean, this, this, these crucial games, man, beginning of the season, Josh Allen turned the ball over four times week one, losing to Zach Wilson. I mean, it's going to come down – I think it's going to come around to bite him in his ass. Yeah, these are the kind of games I bet the Broncos regret losing to the fucking first two weeks to the Raiders, Commanders, Week Five to the Jets. And like they just have so many bad losses that like you're looking back on, you're like, dude, if we win one of those games and start the season two and four, they're right in that eight and six mix with all those other teams. Yeah, I mean the Bills just blew us out. It really doesn't even mean anything. I mean that that it went it means something towards their record, but no tiebreaker whatsoever, an out of conference win. Yeah. So, I mean, All right, so then in the NFC, who do you have in the NFC? Hold on. Last time I fucked up, so give me a second. <laughs> All right, so Eagles, Cowboys, whoever doesn't win the division, bang, okay, yeah, five yeah, yeah. teeth. Then I have the Vikings losing this week, so I, I don't think the Vikings make it. I'm, I'm going to do something kind of crazy. Rams, six. Saints, seven. Seahawks. Hold on. Hold on. Or the short stick. Get the Hold short on. end of the stick. The Rams and the Saints play each other this week. They're both Ooh. seven and seven. I didn't take that into effect. 
I, I guess it kind of has to be the Seahawks then. I don't think the Vikings make it. I don't think the Vikings. I think the Vikings will finish seven and ten. Yeah. I think the Rams take the six. The Packers. The Packers are gonna find a way into this fucking playoff spot. I'm telling you. All right. So let me see. Even if the Panthers, Saints lose this- Panthers, Vikings, Bears. The Packers are going to finish nine and eight. Nine and eight will be good enough for a playoff spot. Yeah. I'm calling it right now. That's the. Packers, we're gonna go. So we. We both just called it the current 11 seeds in each conference to make the playoffs. I bet you can get some good value on both of those right now. Oh, my phone's dying. Fuck. Okay, so we have... Eagles, Rams, Rams have a Rams have a loss. Rams will lose Week 18. They play the Niners. Oh, fuck. The Niners might not even need to play Week 18. Yeah, that might not even matter. Seahawks. Seahawks have three wins as well. I'm going to go Seahawks, six seed. Packers seven seed. Rams out. Rams out. I think Rams, Ram, I, think, I think Ram I think that week eighteen game, they're gonna lose a divisional game. It's gonna be huge. It's huge, yeah. I mean these Packers the Packers and Packers and uh Seahawks have two. Week, eight, easy, week eighteen easy the schedule. Seahawks week eighteen the Seahawks could win a divisional game and the Rams lose a divisional game and they could both have the same record. Correct. Yeah. What have they done head to head, do you know? Uh, I believe the Rams won in LA. Cause, let me see. How I can look at that. My phone's like dying. I can't even shit yeah, right now. Uh, Rams won the most recent matchup in LA, and then Rams won the season opener in Seattle, thirty to thirteen. Rams have the the two zero division record over the head to head. But they have the same record right now. Yeah, I think the Rams lose another game, and I think the Seahawks don't. So would they be technically be tied? No, because they have the same record. Oh yeah, you're right. okay, okay, okay. But the Rams would be tied with the pa- with the Packers if the Packers went out, and if the Packers have the tiebreaker, I think that they get in. Yeah, I don't, I, I, don't, I, I don't know how that looks though. So I'm gonna go. I don't love right I don't love the Rams in this spot Thursday night. That's what I'm saying. I don't like that game either. I think that Saints game could be a, a loss too. But then again, I don't think the Saints make it either way because the Saints cannot win three straight games. No. And the last two they in Tampa go, Bay, go home against Tampa the Bay next week. Yeah. 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 I think it's it's definitely both are uh, wide open. I think you could say really any combination of five teams in, in either conference and it's you all, know what dude, I mean. This is a great playoffs. This is a great playoffs. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the uh oh shit, Packers are not gonna have any tiebreaker. Do you ever do the the playoff thing where uh I forget what website you do it on where you can like press through each week and like who went who you think wins and then it'll tell you like who's gonna make the playoffs based on what you think's gonna happen? No, I haven't. That's actually awesome. I'll try to find it and send you a link to it. It's All right, sweet. Green Bay's four and five in the in the conference right now. The Rams. The Rams lost to Green Bay, so a tiebreaker right there. Green Bay wins it. Yeah, yeah. I like your Green Bay pick. I like that. There's a little value play to sneak up there. Yeah, and then the Cowboys get Green Bay week one, and we get the shit on them by 40 points. Yeah. <laughs> I could definitely see that. I don't know. We'll see. That'd be pretty cool because Aaron Rodgers lost week 18 last week or last year didn't make the playoffs now jordan love's gonna go on a three game going wait year one make the playoffs yeah that would be pretty sick playoffs. i'm calling it give me green bay lock it in they're probably like <laughs> 600 right now but yeah gonna definitely these last three weeks gonna be huge um tight race every every which way both conferences um gonna be a good ending for sure yeah this uh, these next couple of weekends weekends are gonna be fire football but yeah, that's that's about it in the NFL. That's hell of a hell of an NFL segment. Let's jump over to the uh, the the world of the NHL. Yeah, jumping over the NHL here, just like uh, where are we at? Just like eleven days here until the Winter Classic. But here's our power rankings here coming into this week. Number Who's five. The Winter Classic this year. I totally forgot about that. It's the Kings, or sorry, not the Kings. Jeez, Vegas, Ninth, Seattle. And Seattle. Two teams that have no business being in it. Is it in Seattle? Yeah. Where's it at? The baseball stadium? I think so, yeah. It should be at the Seahawks. It's funny. That'd be... uh, Vegas and Seattle. Yeah, two teams that... Uh, I guess Washington's pretty cold. They should just yeah, do it I, at the... Find location, just... Is it, so you're telling me it's at the... It's not at Lumen Field where the Seahawks play? Because that'd be a sick uh, outdoor venue for a hockey. No, I don't think so. 
I hate when they do baseball stadiums. It doesn't look as good. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think it looks awkward. Like the that can't be good for viewing. Like sitting in it's the not. Like that rink is so small. It's basically covering from like second base. Think about a football field, though. I mean, it's it's, it's going great. From like it's awesome. Is it? I, it's just it's yeah. better. I feel. It's, like. I mean, I feel like it's going from like the thirty Doesn't yard matter. line to the thirty yard line. There's, no, like, there's not a ter- like like yeah, you're far, but there's not a terrible seat. Yeah, there's no like ter- like there's no like okay, I got like you. everybody is about the same distance that you're like, every like. like every spot in that place is made to see those like those coordinates. That's that area, yeah. like. Yeah. In the baseball thing, like they they it's counter awkward. center it. So yeah, it's, no matter it's where outfield. you are, unless you're on that baseline, you're screwed. It's mostly all the time in the outfield, like right on the right on the baseline, like in the outfield. Mm-hmm. They just ride one of those. So here's our power rankings here this week, boys. Number five, the Los Angeles Kings. Number four, the Vancouver Canucks. Number three, the Boston Bruins. Number two, the New York Rangers. And finally, number one, the Vegas Golden Knights. Here, like we said, have this Winter Classic game coming up in about 10 days, 11 days. So uh, we'll definitely talk about the game more next week, probably on our episode before, as we get a little closer to that. Um, anything else yeah, to I kinda, add? I kind of forgot about that coming up, the, the winter classic back to that. But yeah, obviously a solid top five or Knights, Rangers, Bruins solidifying themselves as obviously the top three teams in the league. We've had a couple, uh, some bouncing around of these four spots, obviously Vancouver making another appearance, staying up there. Uh, you like to see the Kings. Obviously, they're a nice young team that's been playing pretty good hockey out west as of late. So, uh, the NHL, I feel like the four and five, it, most leagues, I feel like it's the four and five spots that's changing a lot. Uh, the top teams in the league kind of solidifying themselves as we get further on. Uh, Mackie, your Rangers just took down Aces Bruins in a nice little head to head spot. That's how they get the two spot there over Boston. I believe you guys have the same amount of points. So, obviously, pretty close either or in the East. But, um, yeah, I think a solid list this uh, this week in the NHL. Yeah, Rangers, uh, that's second time beating Boston this year. So they take four points in two games from them. So uh, it's it's huge to do over another powerhouse team like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, these teams just playing good hockey week, or day in and day out. They just keep winning games. Uh, Vegas, I think they have four more points than everyone else. Um, a few more games played, but, I mean, steady. They just keep putting up points, keep putting up W. So, um, and they're cup, defending cup champions. So that obviously comes uh, gives them a little more respect as well. Um, but yeah, these we we have the Avalanche obviously right on the outside, Stars right on the outside. Um, we have some teams playing really good hockey right now. I know the Panthers made an appearance that one week, but uh, they're right outside as well. Um, yeah, I think these teams are uh, well deserving as well, though. Good stuff, boys. Lots of good stuff to look forward to in the NHL as the uh, this um, <clears throat> NFL season is quickly coming to an end as we round this new year and gear towards the Super Bowl. Let's shift our focus over to the NBA to finish out our episode here with our power rankings coming in at number five. We have the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, number four, the Philadelphia 76ers, three, the Milwaukee Bucks, two, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and number one, the Boston Celtics. Pretty solid list across the board there. NBA season in full swing. What do you guys got here? out of the NBA here this week. Oh, yeah, the, Nuggets five. What'd you say? I thought you said Nuggets for five. Oh, shit. No, no, wait. I, th- I sent Thunder. I thought, I don't, I don't know. I think you, I said You thunder. said Nuggets, I know, because I, yeah. I was kind of thinking Thunder, and I was like, nah, Nuggets kind of, we got to respect them, but. Yeah, I don't know. We did, we avoided it last week. I don't know. If thunder, Thunder have a game, the half game on the, on the Nuggets. I think this, this could be a good week. We give the Thunder their shine. Uh, Throw them in the top five. I was just gonna say we threw the magic in there last week. Uh, they go two and four in their last six yeah, the since we do bad, that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it looks like we got them in there while at least while they were. You know, we can't say we didn't show our respect to the Orlando Magic. I'm still a fan of them. I like what they're doing down there as a good team, good young team. But obviously, slip in the past couple games. You know, back to back games against the number one team that we have is in the Celtics in Boston. Really, is never a good uh, a good spot for a young team like that. But, um, you know. Minnesota, number one seed in the West. We thought that wasn't going to continue or sustain, but twenty and five on the year. That's absolutely insane. They continue to cover spreads. Nuggets, like you said, we had the the Nuggets or the Thunder. I, I don't know. I feel like Thunder, that young up and coming team on the rise, get them in there. Kind of like I said about the Magic last week. Let's give them their flowers this week. We'll see if they can sustain it as one of the younger teams that are on the up and up. 
Yeah, I think uh, I think OKC is definitely a little more sustainable in that top five than the Orlando Magic are, uh, with superstars like Shy Chet stepping up uh, big time. I think that they can definitely uh, just uh, stay afloat up there in the top five, maybe top seven. Um, just just stay there the entire season. But um, yeah, a lot of these teams just on the outside looking in. Obviously, the Nuggets, defending champs, they're always going to be there, just kind of playing. Um, a little slow, um, getting off to a slower start. But those Timberwolves, man, I mean, Anthony Edwards playing incredible basketball, keeping pace with the Celtics, 20 and 5. Um, best team in the league, tied for the best team in the league. Um, I think they'll be there towards the end of the season. I don't know about a deep playoff run, but I do think this team is going to be. I, I think they're, I think I said it last week, too. I think they're a lot like the Memphis Grizzlies from last year. Um, I can see it as a great comparison. Maybe get past the first round this year because probably not going to have to play the Lakers this year. Well, actually, we don't even know how the season's going to end. But, yeah. Um, I think probably... Lakers Lakers are in with the top six spot. If they're yeah. if the if the Timberwolves can sustain this, obviously we still have a lot of basketball left. Only like twenty five games in, at least for the Timberwolves, they can sustain a top three spot. I don't think they'll have to worry about the Lakers till the second round. Similar to what the Grizzlies did last year. Yeah, um, I I like this Timberwolves team. I think Ant's balling out. I think he's playing with one of the best players in the league. A lot like what Shy Shy did last year. Kind of uh, sprouted a lot last year. Big big improvement. So I think he's uh playing a lot like that. But um, yeah, this Timberwolves team is really good. Definitely a wagon. NBA Christmas Day, obviously. So definitely stay tuned to the uh, social media. We always love to get plays out on the Christmas Day games. A fire Christmas Day slate, as we always get. So I'm um, very excited. Love NBA Christmas Day. I know the NFL is trying to take over Christmas, but my childhood was always NBA and Christmas. Uh, I'm obviously going to watch the NFL games, but definitely not you know turning my eye to these NBA games. I always love watching the NBA on Christmas Day. Heck yeah, guys. Lots of good stuff out of the NHL, NBA, NFL, especially here. Week 16 of the NFL, 16 games this week. Don't forget about our live stream each and every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, YouTube and Rumble. But that's all I got here this week. Anything else to add, boys? No, I think that's going to do it. Like I said, NBA Christmas Day coming up, NFL, big NFL weekend with uh, the Thursday Night Football, Saturday NFL, Sunday NFL, and a bunch of Monday Christmas Day games. So full weekend in the NFL. NBA, obviously, NHL card. Like we said, we have a lot of plays going out every night, so make sure you're following. Turn that, hit that bell, turn the post notifications on so you know when we're releasing them. Uh, other than that, you know, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, getting content out there for you guys. We really appreciate the follow, like, share, subscribe, the whole nine yards like that. But obviously, no ace this week, so happy to get him back next week. Have a happy holiday weekend, and we'll see you guys next week.